Before I start up this video, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who watched, who not only watched and liked the, the last video I made about Harvey Weinstein and Miyazaki's view between each other, but just from the comments alone and all the feedback that you gave me, I, I'm, I'm lost for words, honestly. I, I really can't thank you enough for just taking your time to watch the video and showing me like what I can do better or just showing up and just, you know. Like I said, I'm lost for words. I really don't know how else to say anything else but thank you. Like, I really do appreciate your viewership and just thank you for just giving me the feedback that's necessary. I also wanted to deeply apologize for sounding a bit sentimental right now. And also the fact that I missed out on a lot of detail that I shouldn't have missed out on in, in that video in particular. There was a detail that I did leave out, and I really do feel guilty about it. It was a, basically about the fact that Miyazaki wasn't the one who sent the film back to him, to Weinstein. It was Toshio Suzuki, his executive producer, that sent it back. I do apologize. Uh, the reason why I brought it up because a comment in that video actually mentioned to me that it was in the documentary. And I feel embarrassed about it because I did watch the documentary and I completely just, it completely just slipped my mind, and I'm really embarrassed about that. But, but I'm also appreciative of the feedback that I got from that, and that detail that I left out. So, so whoever made that comment, I do appreciate you telling me that. And hopefully, in the next videos, I'll do better research, and, you know, just try to do a better job with, with all that. So, with that being said, again, thanks for watching that video, and I hope you enjoyed this one too. So, with that said, on with the video. Alright, so based on the title of the video, I do have a bit of an explanation for this. First thing is, I did promise to make this video and try to get it out as soon as I could. I was trying to do it before Christmas, actually. I, I went through editing for like the past two weeks or so. I've been on and off of it because it just took so long to do and my Wi-Fi was slowing down, especially when it came to uploading, which, it took, which is why it took so long. And unfortunately, I've been left with this. Oh. Yep, I'm pretty sure you had this happen to you guys before, and it's not the first time it's happened to me too. Like, pretty much since I started this channel, I've been getting it nonstop. But I guess that's what happens when you choose to do movie reviews for your channel. You get hiccups such as this. I'm not entirely going to blame YouTube for this. Maybe it was my fault that I had some clips that were just bare and raw, the clips themselves, and they were probably longer than they should have been. But that was there just to make a point like, make my points valid in terms of what I was trying to show. I mean, I guess the least I can do is still show you, like, my thoughts on it in terms of the movie that I was trying to talk about. At least then, at least try to understand, you know, that I still want to talk about the movie. It's hard to do that when you don't have visuals, though. And it seems like YouTube is trying to stop you from showing those. Or specifically Warner Brothers. I'm not entirely sure why. I, I guess they're a little too proud of this movie. I don't know. I'll go more into detail as I go through this, I guess, review. It's not really a review to me. It's more like just me talking about a film briefly. I don't really like doing that. I like to go into depth with these films just to give my perspective in terms of how I think about them. I mean, everyone does it differently. There's no right or wrong way for me to do it. I just prefer to do it my own way. But unfortunately, YouTube isn't letting me. So I guess we're just going to have to do it their way in order to get my thoughts out. So, with that being said, I'm still going to show a review of this film, but in a way that's YouTuber-oriented, let's just say, as far as that. Um, so, with that being said, I guess we'll just talk about the film briefly. So, here we go. Let's talk about Peter Pan. There have been many, many adaptations of this world famous classic fairy tale to which it became the most looked upon. The most famous adaptations that come to mind are the Disney version from 1953, Hook, directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Robin Williams, the 2003 version, Finding Neverland, starring Johnny Depp, which came out a year later, and yeah, that's pretty much it. But then in 2015, Warner Brothers decided to release a new story of Peter Pan where it portrays the origins of what made the classic fairy tale hero. 
Yeah, nobody gave a shit. For one of research, it's unclear as to why this movie flopped and why it was critically panned. But what matters to me is how I personally feel about the movie. My verdict? It's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be. Does that mean that it's good? Uh, let me explain. It's one of those movies where there are some good ideas that I think could be emphasized and explored more. Ideas that could potentially make it a much better movie. In the same way as something like Never Ending Story 2, which I did a review on about a year ago. If you want to check that out, feel free to do so to get better context. But similar to this movie, Pan has the potential to be a better movie, but it has some moments that are easy to poke fun at. These videos are what I call intriguing misfire movie reviews. These reviews follow on topics of movies that aren't exactly a lost cause, but they're not guilty pleasures either. And I thought this movie was perfect for this category. So while I review this movie and kind of tear it to shreds, I'll also be piecing it up together again. There are some good ideas in this movie that I wish to present, and there are some bad ideas that I like to present. Overall, trying to piece together a much better film that might come for this movie. I don't know if it would have saved it from flopping the box office, but at least it would have saved it from being critically panned. <laughs> the main problem with this movie is that it's boring. The characters are boring, and the interesting stuff they could have done with the characters, they're way too mundane and uninspired. Like they have Peter as just a regular boy who's just from from Britain during World War II. And then there's Captain Hook, who's probably the worst character in the entire movie, mostly because he's a blank slate. He doesn't really have any personality other than... I don't think he even has a personality. The only thing he has for himself is that he's played by Garrett Hedlund, who played as Sam Flynn from Tron Legacy. That's about it. And then there's Hugh Jackman. At least, you know, Hugh Jackman is entertaining as hell in this movie because he pretty much goes over the top throughout the entire movie, and it's pretty hilarious to watch. Times I am not to be disturbed when I'm at the rejuvenator! Yes, and yet you assure me all will be well given the proper time. There is no time! Not the rest of the characters aren't that memorable, so I won't even bring them up. The story is where it pisses me off the most. There's this one trope that I actually absolutely hate in terms of fantasy storytelling, and that's the prophecy. Every time I hear the word prophecy, I'm like, I'm I'm completely checked out because like the story wants to follow an agenda or have some form of path that's grown for the character. And it's like, why do you have to make a path for him? Just, it's a fantasy story. Just make whatever the hell you want. No holds bars. Do whatever the hell you want with this. I guess you, when you get movies like The Lord of the Rings or Chronicles of Narnia, you can see where the prophecy can actually be annoying at times, but at least it has some good characters in there and a good story to at least kind of be jumbled in there so that it can at least give you a good movie to watch. Or a good story to watch with this film it's just bare bones like we're just following what everyone else did without any real passion or drive and we're just trying to follow a formula that's that's all we're doing here and it's 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 this kind of movie that does it the worst out of all of them. like do we really need a prophecy for peter pan you know the kid who can fly and you know all that shit? we we d no we don't and the fact that they have in this movie is a slap in the face to, you know, the Peter Pan character. Or just this, the fairy tale in general. There's also a bunch of references from the original story that they implement into the movie. But they don't so much as connect it to what happens in this story moving on to the next story. Or at least the next part of the story that leads them to what we know Peter Pan as. They're just references. Like there's this one with Captain Hook holding the hook in his hand, using it to sharpen the pick of, uh, of Peter Pan while he's mining. He brings that only once or twice, but they never he never uses it again. There's a scene where James Hook puts his, his hand into crocodile waters uh, with the fear of losing his hand, which is also a reference. And then there's this line. So the boy is lost? Yes, uh, he is a lost boy. It's just as lame as it sounds. Not to mention the effects are badly rendered and terribly executed, especially when they try to do the effects on Peter Pan's flying. It's like looking at a broken wind-up toy. But I think the biggest slap in the face for me was the dynamic between Peter Pan and Captain Hook. This is probably the worst written dynamics I've ever seen in any movie. Not only are they blank slates and they're boring characters, but they're also just have no 
real dynamic between each other. I mean, the whole point of Ca of Captain Hook and Peter Pan is that they're rivals. They hate each other. Like one's a trickster and likes to pull pranks on him, and the other one just wants to kill him. I don't understand why that's so hard to put that together, but for some reason in this film, they're best friends. Not that they really show any real chemistry between each other. I mean, there is like one good line from one of the characters, and unfortunately, it's the worst one. What makes it so frustrating is that the character, Captain Hook, doesn't even have a motivation as to what he wants to do. Like, we, we understand with Peter, he just wants to find his mother, but with, with Hook, he, he wants to leave, but he also wants to help his friends. Like, what, what are you trying to show me here? I don't really get what you're trying to do. It's really confusing and very frustrating to watch. So with all of those problems being set down, there are some good things about it. Like, for example, the music is really good. Except for this one part, actually two parts where when you show up to the pirate mine thing or whatever, there's this part where they sing Nirvana smells like teen spirit, and it's the stupidest scene in the entire movie. Like, they're, they're all in chorus, they're all in the mines, everyone's like, and here we are now, entertain us, here we f me. Like, really? Like, is this the song you go with? You couldn't just make up a song? Jesus. And then there's, I, oh, let's go, f this, dumb sh they actually sung that song, like from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, if you played that, it was in that it was in that game too, and it's in this movie for some reason. It's it's that dumb stuff like that, it's, it makes me wonder why Warner Bros. even signed off on it, and apparently they're proud of it because they copyrighted me for that shit too. So, <laughs> well it's unfair I guess, huh? This will be my overall perspective in terms of how the movie should have gone, and I'm going to share that with you right now. Here will be my synopsis of this entire movie and what it should have been. Peter Pan is obviously born of of heritage of the fairies, but instead of being left behind by his mother, he's actually protected by her pretty much the entire journey. But they get separated by Blackbeard, and Peter has to find his way back to Neverland in order to find his mother. Within the time he tries to go there, he realizes he can't fly, or at least far enough to get back to Neverland. But when he finds out that there are children being kidnapped, he tries to follow the trail in order to find out where they're going. That leads him to the mines and leads him to Captain Hook. Again, I already mentioned Hook being wanting to be a pirate and trying to take down Blackbeard, and that will create them butting heads between him and Peter. While at his mother's side, they both fight Blackbeard, but Blackbeard gets killed by Hook and, all, and gets double-crossed by Peter, and now Peter has to fight him, and then Hook, you know, let's say he kills his mother. I mean, uh, Peter's mother. Whether or not you agree with that synopsis, I didn't. Ex I don't think I explained it very well. I did the best I could, but honestly, I feel that's a lot better than this movie. That's really all the rest of this movie is. I, I don't really have much else to say about it. I will have a conclusion though. So here it is. By and large, this isn't the worst movie I've watched since I started this channel. There are a lot of worst movies I've watched over the year I've been doing this. If this movie has has its points here or there. It's got some it's got some decent performances when they're not entirely over the top. Some neat little visuals here and there and a pretty good and a pretty decent score to go along with it. But it's buried down by such a by a boring and uninspired plot and some really dumb and uninspired decisions to go along with it that make this movie such a bore. There's a good movie in this somewhere and it could have actually worked if they put some more thought into it. But as it stands, it's just it's just pan, and it got panned real hard, really, really hard. I mean, for giving little of a sh that they did making this movie, they kind of deserved it. If they put a little bit more effort into it, maybe they could have had something. But as it stands, it's just crap. It's it's just crap. All just crap. Anyway, that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. If you watched the whole thing, I thank you for doing so. And if you'd like, I'm not going to pressure anybody watching this video, but if I would appreciate some feedback. I realize my subscriber count is getting a little bigger every so often, and I really do appreciate that. I mean, 32 subscribers, I mean, that's more than six that I've had for over a year, and it's been stagnant for a while, so to see it grow is pretty cool. So, with that said, I'd like to see some feedback, if if, it, if that's at all possible. Again, not pressuring anybody to comment, uh, it's up to you if you want to do so, but I would greatly appreciate it. With that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.